course, this is, um, this is the uh, Taipo River. And present time, NZTA uh, doing quite a big upgrade on the railing on the sides, which is great to see. Yeah, this, uh, this bridge was, it's, it's a bit unique really. It's got concrete filled cast iron cylinder piers. Now they were first constructed in uh, 1886 and they were later modified to incorporate the bridge that you can see in front of us here. Now the original 1886 bridge featured eight cylinder piers with timber superstructure. There's the toll truck heading through. The bridge was recreated in 1936 which when, was when there was a lot of activity opening the road and the bridge continues to be used as part of State Highway 73. It was originally bridged in 1866 but the river shifted rendering the former bridge useless. The new Taipo River Bridge back then was designed by Francis William Martin in uh, 1855 to 1895, though, that's when he lived. And it was a prominent engineer, Charles O'Connor, who determined the location of the, the current bridge. He intended it to carry the future West Coast rail line. So quite a lot of history here and of course the Cobb & Co uh, came through as well. But I'm here today to promote discussion and some action on what we call the Coasters Freight Tax. Now it's really special. What it does is that every bit of road freight comes in with an extra tax and that places an increase on every item that ends up in the shops and the supermarkets. You might say, look, how does that happen? Well, pretty simple. We have five bridges going to Christchurch that are weight restricted. And the trucks can only carry a total weight of 50 tonnes. In other parts of the country, of course, it's 68 tonnes. So our major exporters, and we have a few of them, have to forego at peak 18 tonnes on every load across the hill. So the trucks come over 80% loaded. It's a coast special tax which makes every freight truck that goes over this bridge having to leave $720 of freight in Christchurch or back on the coast. Crazy, isn't it? And you and me as consumers pay this cost directly. Every time you buy something, we pay more for our freight than we need to. How many trucks a day go between Kamara and Christchurch? Well, we reckon it's about 80. I've rung a few of the truckies. And that's a, about 160 uh, trips there and back each day. When you run the figures, that's $115,200 loss of income every day at peak. And it's because of our special coast freight tax. And it's a cost that every company that is exporting from the coast and our coasters paying for goods coming onto the coast takes on the chin. It's an extra cost that's unnecessary. Upgrading bridging on State Highway 73 is urgent and it makes good economic sense. State Highway 73 retains five bridges that are unable to adequately, adequately cater to HPMV and 50 ton max vehicles. This results in these vehicles loaded to an 80% capacity in order to be able to traverse this route. Extended travel routes or unmaximized freight capacity 
increases the cost of freight, which makes this inefficient for business through increased travel costs. Now improving this route will not only benefit the west coast, but it will lead to achieving outcomes sought in the government policy statement for land transport 2021, because it will assist economic prosperity. Additional cost is less profits. Less profits, less money to reinvest. It will also assist in the transition to net zero carbon emissions by reducing travel time and volumes. Now Waka Gohai, or NZTA, has promoted State Highway 7 via the Lewis Pass as the HPMV route for the transport of freight from the west coast to Canterbury. This option is unviable for business located in the grey and western districts of the west coast as it requires several extra hours of travel from point of origin to destination. State Highway 73 is a pivotal supply chain route for business and communities on our coast. Long term improvements to bridging stock will lead to enhanced business confidence and certainty. And these are critical matters for investment in the region. And God knows we need it. Now we don't expect immediate replacement of these bridges. Instead, we need to know that NZTA Waka Kautai are planning to address the replacement or strengthening of these over the next five to ten years to bring the route up to a standard suitable for catering for HBMV and 50 tonne maximum vehicles. Now the matter has been raised every year for the last five years and every year there's no way these bridges are getting up the list because there's bridges in Hamilton, Auckland and in the North Island that uh, require investment at the expense of these. Keep in mind, at maximum peak, this is costing us $115,200 every 24 hours. Now trucks these days are designed to allow for the safe and more efficient transport of freight goods. And the improvement of this route is a pivotal factor for the success of the primary production sector on the west coast. I remind you once again, the bridges requiring strengthening or replacement are 1. Griffin Creek 2. The Typo 3. The Big Wainini 4. The Bealey Bridge at Klondike and 5. The Limeworks Bridge at Springfield. Now, there's not much more we can do than advocate for a fair deal here. And it's not a fair deal when our exporters and our people on the west coast are being penalised at peak by $115,200 per 24 hours. Come on folks, let's get real and you'll hear a lot more about this during 2021.